I guess I'm a toy reviewer now, huh? Damn! Hey guys, Walmart Jobby here. Welcome to my review of the Mastermind Creations Optus Knox, a Nemesis Prime recolor of Optus Pexis, who's a third party representation of Orion Pax from the IDW comics. Orion Pax, if you didn't know, is just Optimus before he became an alpha male. If you couldn't tell already, Nemesis Prime is just Optimus Prime but evil. Usually, Nemesis Prime is just a recolor of Optimus Prime and his variants, never Orion Pax as far as I know, and I find that idea really cool. Imagine a show where Megatron completely manipulated Orion Pax and they both did evil shit, that would be so metal. You see Orion, the liberal left act like they care about the people, yet still project a woke agenda to those who do not want it. The conservative right is where true unity is. Because we are the people, we are not an ideology. They bring the ideology to us by acting on it. What? Before we look at the figure, let's take a look at his box. It just has pictures of him and some minor descriptions like this on the side that says he's a field commander. Out of the box, a little bit of transforming and assembly is required, so skip to this timestamp if you don't want to see that. With that over with, here's his card with stats on the back, an instruction booklet, and all his accessories in a ziploc bag. And here he is in all his big black glory. Doesn't he remind you of someone? I'm a little late to the party when it comes to this mold, but let me just add to the praises. The sculpting is fantastic, the painting is precise and durable, and the red accents keep him from looking too bland. Holy shit, he's doing the Harry pose, I am going to fucking come. And just look at that head sculpt, that's badass. He even comes with two. Process to change them is a bit of a bitch though. You gotta unscrew the head, take it apart, put it back together, wrap it around the ball joint, and that's it. It's worth it though. However, I wish it could've been easier. I mean, couldn't this be done? Between the two headpieces, I prefer the alternate headpiece. The screaming face is too edgy for me. It's not a phase, mom! This is who I am! You get these twin shooters that plug into his arms, and you can actually put two in one arm, which looks really cool. If that wasn't enough firepower, you also get these two blasters which plug right into his hands or his shoulders. To make him wield it with his hands, you gotta extend the barrel and extend the pistol grip. That'll allow you to plug it in and then wrap his fingers around and there you go. To mount the gun onto his shoulder, raise this piece up and you see that tab over there? Put the gun onto it upside down. My pronouns are FREE MAN! GO AHEAD LIBERAL, TRY AND TAKE MY GUNS AWAY FROM ME! An evil looking matrix of leadership, you can take the handles off and then shove it in him, but it's not as straightforward as just putting it inside his chest, you gotta transform him a little and then shove it in. The handles plug into his hips, when not in use. You literally give him love handles. BEHOLD! THE POWER OF THE CHAOS Emer I MEAN DARK MATRIX! You get a long cloth cape with a plastic piece to hold it in place, and finally an overly cool sword. Combine them all together and... This is excessively cool! You can store the sword on the back with this piece, plug it into his back and slide the sword in. Ball joint at the head. This hinge joint allows him to look up that far and he looks down that far. Shoulders on a double hinge joint allow him for a lot of range up and down and can move forward and back. Rotation of the arm, bicep swivel, double jointed elbow which reveals some cool hydraulic detail. Wrist rotation, wrist can move up and down, sassy. Individually articulated fingers which can splay apart. His chest area is in a ball joint which has a hinge attached to it that allows him to crunch. His lower abdomen can extend and has hinges that also make him crunch from there, and they can move left and right. You can literally make him suck his own dick. Hip skirts move out of the way. The legs have this mechanism where this joint slides forward to allow for a ton of movement range. Legs can move forward this far, and back that far. He can do the full split. Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me? Don't you wish your girlfriend was a freak like me? <laughs> More than 90 degree bend at the knee. Be careful of these panels, they may break. Just look at those moving parts. Feet can move up and down an impressive amount. 
so bend, and a pivot left and right. Articulation is this thing's bread and butter. It's one of the best on the market. The joints are so tight and smooth. I, I mean, watch this. Okay, so here's a test where I grab their calves and see how stable they are. And now Optus Knox. I mean, <laughs> that speaks for itself, doesn't it? But Yeet Man, I hear you say. Light of Peace is a bigger figure, so that's kind of an unfair comparison. And you'd be right, so here's Bumblebee. And just so you guys think I'm cheating, here's the same test at a different angle. My hand is gripping his calf, I'm not keeping his knee joint from moving. Are you impressed yet? My only complaints are I wish he could move his shoulders forward a bit more and that ankle tilt could have been deeper. But those don't take away from what is essentially a platinum standard of articulation for Transformers figures and figures in general. This thing is more articulated than some anime figures and doesn't even require a stand to hold them. Eat your heart out, anime. Honestly, if you display him like this, you deserve the death penalty. G1 Cliff Jumper, yes, I finally have one. My previous review, the MSO2 Light of Peace, another Nemesis Prime toy I own, the Q Transformers Nemesis Prime, a custom Staccato 2011 chambered in 45 ACP, and finally, a similarly colored custom built AR 15 equipped with a 10 inch barrel suppressed with a 6 inch suppressor topped off with a 1.5 to 5 times low power variable optic. Let's not forget this guy's a transformer, so let's boot up some nice, relaxing music and. No! I choose the music now! Here he is in his Cybertronian truck looking thing, whatever this thing is. It looks so badass, like something Batman or Shadow the Hedgehog would drive and I absolutely love it. And the process to get here was an absolute joy. In my 7 months of owning this, it has not gotten stale. The transformation was a bit confusing at first, but that's only because the instructions were backwards. Alt mode the robot. But they really clear the other way around, which makes me wonder, why is it not packaged in alt mode? I guess it's so that collectors don't have to go through the transformation process and just display it immediately, and to that I say, you're all bitch babies. Part of the magic is unboxing a transformer in its alternate form, and then revealing its robot mode. That's how it was for the most part in the original toy line, why can't it be like that now? There are robots in disguise, are they not? Why can't they be packaged in disguise? I've gone off topic, back to the review. He rolls well in alt mode, but I wish his tires were rubber. Come on, Mastermind Creations, at this price point, put some rubber on there. The two guns not only plug onto the top, but on the sides as well. The sword has nowhere to go. Unless you're like me and use your brain. Take that sword piece from earlier, put it here, and there you go, complete weapon storage. 
Get back here, liberal. <laughs> the love handles still plug into the same place they plugged into earlier, but the cape and its attachment piece still have nowhere to go. So. Here he is with Cliff Jumper, Mini Nemesis Prime, Magic Square Light of Freedom, 2011, AR-15. Overall, I give this guy a 4.8 out of 5. Super poseable, super solid, and super sexy. I'm not one to buy recolors of a figure, but the shattered glass version of this mold would have made 12-year-old me suddenly aware that he could produce semen.